Well, how y'all are? This is your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range with my eight. I'm on a gun rant. The gun rant I'm on today is the endless arguing and bickering and going on on the internet, on the gun boards, in gun magazines, on YouTube, about the difference between 308 and 7.62 by 51 NATO. Or 308 or 223 and 556. Five, Boys, there ain't no difference. There ain't a bit of difference in the world between the 308. Let's see if I can hit that chip of a clay pigeon down there. Yeah. 308, 7.62 by 51 NATO. There's no difference in cartridge dimension, in bullet dimension, or anything like that. There's simply no difference. Now, in the case of a military service rifle like a Setme or a Fowl, or an M14, or you know, M60 machine gun, you know, Mag 58, something like that. That's 7.62 by 51 NATO. What that means is, is that bullet, that cartridge in its entirety, is manufactured and loaded to a standard which is accepted by NATO for bullet weight, velocity, and so forth. Now, if you've got a gun that's bored for NATO ammunition, chambered and bored for NATO ammunition, that gun is probably going to work best with 7.62 by 51 designated ammo, which is 2,800 feet per second, let's say, 147 grain full metal jacket bullet and like that. That gun probably wouldn't work as well with ammunition that came out of a box that said 308 Winchester and had a 180 grain projectile. Okay? But when it comes right down to it, there's no difference between them. The only difference is the velocity specification that it's loaded to and the bullet weight specification that it's loaded to. But the cartridge is exactly the same. You know. So if you had a foul and you didn't have any ammunition that was marked 7.62 by 51, but you had some 150 grain soft point ammunition that was loaded at 2,800 feet per second, you'd probably be just fine. We're down here shooting chips with a 17 at 125 yards, and there's shotgun shell down there, too. I'm bouncing it around. Boom. We're about ready for groundhog season. Same thing goes for 5.56 five, and 2.23. Two, okay. That's like... It's like 7.62 by uh, 7.62 by 48R. You know what that is? 3030. <laughs> That's what that is. You know? We get so caught up on that metric designation and you think that it means something else and it just doesn't. Shooting good today. I don't know. I get this thing leaned across the fence post. The groundhog's in real trouble. This clay pigeon laying down there on the flat ground. I don't know if I can get it.
So, don't get so tore up about it. You know? People get real tore up about this stuff, and it's like, you know, it is what it is. You know? But... It's not a terribly complicated thing. If you crack open a reloading book, you know, and, uh, you know, you look in there, the information for the two different cartridges is exactly the same. Now, let's talk about constitutional carry for a minute. Kentucky's going to have constitutional carry. First of July. You know, what does that mean? Well, basically, Kentucky is becoming a good character state. If you are a person of good character, that means that you can carry a concealed deadly weapon in the limits of the Commonwealth of Kentucky without a license. Can you be charged with carrying a concealed deadly weapon? Yes, you can. How can I be charged with carrying concealed deadly weapon when we have constitutional carry? Well, you can be charged with, const with concealed deadly weapon, A, if you take concealed deadly weapon into a place where it's absolutely prohibited, like a federally managed facility or a uh, community hospital, you know, that's governmentally operated or something of that nature, airport, you know, so on. Uh, or if you are doing something that's inherently illegal when you're doing it and you're carrying concealed deadly weapon, you can be charged with carrying concealed deadly weapon because you're breaking the law somewhere else. You know. Uh, I make a strong advisement to anyone that I know in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. If you don't get your firearms training from me, that's fine. Just get it. Uh, I'm exploring the uh, concept of teaching uh, a concealed deadly weapons course that uh, is not the state, but it's basically a legal brief. A legal brief and a marksmanship test. Uh, independent of of DOJCT or state government. Uh, when I find out that it's legal to do that, I'll start offering that class so at least a person will be able to get down there if they get into a situation where they have to use force on another person, they'll at least be able to go through it with a certificate in their hand saying that they at least tried to understand the law. They at least made an honest effort to become competent with their firearm and so forth. Uh, if you're going to carry a concealed deadly weapon in Commonwealth, Kentucky, I strongly advise you to at least take the training and receive the certificate from DOJCT or another accredited organization. And then go on and carry without a license, not have to pay the license fee. I cringe to think that there's a time when there's 100,000 or 200,000 people in the Commonwealth of Kentucky walking around with a 38 in their back pocket and no idea when they can and can't use force against another person lawfully. So that's something to think about. So this is an old rant video and uh, try and create a little information for people. That's about the size of it. Uh, like, take, verify, commentate, and subscribe. Got me an old dollar in the Patreon bucket if you like my content on the way out the door. If you don't, well, I'll keep uh, making content for you anyway. All right, then. We'll see y'all.